Hi everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes to review Cal with you guys. And so let's do this using these three teeth. So this is example A, and I want you guys to imagine that this is a healthy um, area in someone's mouth. And what happens is when the gum is healthy, it is slightly above or coronal to the CEJ, right? So this is the gingival margin that I'm drawing over here. And in a healthy mode, it is coronal to the CEJ. The CEJ is right here. It is coronal. Coronal means it's above the CEJ or towards the crown. We're going to look at example B. And let's say in example B, the gingival margin is at the CEJ. So it kind of looks like this. It's right at the CEJ. And there's the gingival margin. And then we're going to do example, or we're going to go to example C, and we're going to see recession, where the gingival margin is apical. Apical means below the CEJ, or towards the apex of the root. And so here we see the gingival margin apical to the CEJ. This is your CEJ right here. So now let's see what our probing depths, our gingival margin, and cal will look like. So we're going to start with probing depth. And let's just say here, I probe the mesial, the uh, facial, and the distal, and let's say it's a healthy mouth. Um, I'm getting two, one, two. Okay, so that's my probing depth. Now I'm going to measure the gingival margin. And the gingival margin, this is, can be challenging because you really got a feel for the CEJ with your probe. And what you're measuring is you're measuring the distance from the CEJ to the top of the gingival margin. And so with your probe, you're measuring how far is that distance or how long is that distance on the mesial side, on the facial side, on the distal side, and you do the same thing for the lingual. So let's say when I did this, it was, um, maybe it was two over here, it was one over here and two over here. So the first thing is because it is the gum is over, or above the CEJ, we subtract. If there was recession, like we see over here, then we would add. But if it is above, then we subtract. So we're going to say minus 2 on the mesial, minus 1 on the facial, minus 2 on the distal. And now when we calculate the cal, the clinical attachment loss, we get 0, 0, 0. All right, let's move on to example B. Now here, um, to keep it consistent, the, I'm going to keep the probing depth the same. So I probed here and I got 2, 1, 2. Now my question to you is what is the gingival margin if it is right at the CEJ? So if it's right at the CEJ, what would the gingival margin be? I'm hoping you said 0, 0, 0 because it's right at the CEJ. It's a 0. If it was above, you measured a distance from gingival margin to the from size from CEJ to gingival margin. If it was below, you measured the distance from the CEJ to the gingival margin. But here it's right at. So the gingival margin line would be zero, zero, zero. And so now when we calculate the cal, we're gonna total all this and we get two, one, two. Last example, we're gonna keep it simple. Probing depth is two, one, two. The gingival margin. Well, there's recession now, right? So we have to measure the distance from here to here, from here to here, and from um, the CEJ to the gingival margin. And let's say when I do that, on the mesial, I get a 2. On the facial, I get a 1. On the distal, I get a 2. And because there is recession, we have to add all these numbers. So we're going to add all these numbers. And what is our clinical attachment loss? It's 4. 1 plus 1, 2. 2 plus 2, 4. So now my question to you is, which tooth is the worst one? It's in the worst, is it, um, it's the worst condition. Which one would you say is the worst? See, this tooth over here, this is the worst because look at the cal. The cal is the highest. The cal tells you how bad that tooth is. Which one is the best? This one. Example A is the best. So we would be really happy when we have clients that have cals of zero because that means they're healthy or they could have gingivitis but it, it's not perio here it's the second um, best because uh, technically the gingival margin should be right above this dcej in health but it's kind of gone down right so we are seeing some loss and we do see some cows here so um, perio has started and this 
example C is quite severe. So if we look at this again, what I really want you guys to know is that the probing depth is the same for all of them. So the probing depth doesn't really give you a good indicator of whether the, the entire area is healthy or not. It's more the cow that gives you the true indicator about the perio condition. So cal is more important in some cases uh, compared to probing depth. I hope that was helpful.